Virginia state senator who pushed Trump to declare martial law charges Democrats with treason. How's your morning going? Because it's not just this one story. It's also this one story. North Carolina GOP lawmaker urges Trump to suspend civil liberties to keep power and invoke the Insurrection Act. My, how fun. And it's not just this story. It's also this story. Michael Flynn, Trump could deploy military to rerun election. Apparently he could. I think it would just be a declaration of civil war if that were the case. But I tell you this right now, when I read these Trump forums, you see these Trump supporters, man, they're telling Trump to quote unquote, cross the Rubicon. They're talking about stories of Caesar and challenging the political bloat and corruption to create the first American empire. I know it sounds funny, but they're actually saying it. Some people may be jokingly, sure, but many are pointing out that the republic is in danger and that our interests are being sold out to China and that Trump must do something about it. I don't know who must do what about it, because the, the, the reality is most people don't agree on exactly what must be done, and that is a serious challenge. But I do think one thing that must be done is a restoration of the principles of the Constitution and the return to some kind of cohesive culture. I don't know exactly how that's done, and maybe it can't be done, but we certainly right now have Democrats and their supporters who do not agree with this country and the Constitution. Am I saying all Democrats everywhere? Of course I'm not. But when you look at people like Andrew Cuomo, he recently banned hate symbols and straight up said, yeah, we understand it's probably a violation of the Constitution. You take a look at many of these states who are in direct violation of the electors clause of the Constitution. There is very clearly right now a dangerous thing happening. Two very large, massive, distinct cultures, not the only cultures. I can already hear the left screaming. But what about this culture and that culture I'm talking about in the culture war? You have those who believe in the Constitution for all its faults, perhaps, and for all of its merits, of course. And you have people who say, if there is a problem, we can just amend the Constitution. We must vote. We must make these changes. But what happens when half the country is so far removed from the other half, there will never be a constitutional convention or a chance to actually amend, um, 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 uh, amend the Constitution. And some people have pointed out that were, I think, one state, uh, this was a comment we received the other day on the podcast, one state legislature away from actually having that power, because then you'd have 30 states to 20. I don't know if that's enough. Maybe it is. Sure, whatever. But I think we're looking at something just remarkably dangerous. You know, when I talk to my friends, they're, they're cheering on the vaccine, they're cheering on the lockdown, they're cheering on Fauci, and they're demanding money from the government. These things are untenable. These are not solutions to any problem. In fact, the, the, the Democrats caused the problem with all the lockdowns, which are not legal, not constitutional. They're not, when, I, when, I, when I say not legal, I'm saying they're not uh, uh, passed through a legislative body approved, you know, approved. They're just edicts from these governors. They've destroyed the economies. Then they go to the federal government and say, print us some money or give us some money. They're asking for us to solve the problem they created. So when I see my friends saying, good, lock everything down, it must be done and the government should give us money. I'm like, bro, you created that problem. You've, you've created it. We've now gone on what, what nine months. OK, the, the, the lockdowns didn't work. We've been wearing masks. It's not stopping the, the, the major spike. Then they come out and they say the vaccine. But we had Dr. Vin Gupta on MSNBC that say that the vaccine doesn't actually prevent you from getting COVID. We don't know. And you still can't be traveling or doing anything like, anything like this. So, so not to get off on, on a vaccine tangent, the point is, how do we have some states, maybe mainly cities, saying yes, martial law, yes, total lockdown, and yes, just medicate everybody that'll solve the problem and print more money? Fine. If that's what they want, that's, that, that's their prerogative. But then you have other people who are saying, dude, stop, protect the vulnerable, release the lockdowns, give people the vaccine if they so choose. And we have to learn how to deal with this like adults. And that does mean people lose lives. It's horrifying. But as Trump has said, the disease, uh, the cure can't be worse than the disease. And the lockdown certainly is that. Then on the other side, 
we have people like this VA state senator more focused on the election results, saying martial law. On the left, the overwhelming majority have been screaming and demanding some form of martial law. On the right, it's split with a small faction of ardent Trump supporters demanding martial law and a rerun of the election, and most just saying, can we just please move forward and be adults? You know what that means? My friends, it means the only real outcome is probably going to be some kind of martial law. So I tell you this, the, the, the right wing individuals, the VA, I'll, 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 we'll, and we'll read this on the VA state senator, when he's saying declare martial law, I say, OK, we're already basically under martial law when NYPD are arresting people for serving food. See, martial law is, is specifically military law. I, I'm pretty sure. When the military comes in, say the Insurrection Act, and then they impose law over civilian law. But what we're talking about colloquially, when we say martial law, we're talking about harsh, extra legal lockdown. That means you have police who are not following any laws, just doing whatever they're told by a governor who's in violation of the Constitution. Martial law typically, there's two ways to look at it. The official way is military rule or just totalitarian lockdown. Pick one. Do you want it from Trump or do you want it from Biden? Because either way, it's already here. And therein lies the main problem. Yo, I'm sitting out here in the middle of nowhere. I see mountains in front of me covered in snow. And we were going snowboarding down the hill the other day. I actually ended up doing an accidental front flip and I got my left hand kind of all uh, a little, little scraped up. That's what I'm doing. Many of you are probably doing the same thing. And I don't think sitting back and doing nothing is appropriate. I absolutely do not. Too many people would sit by and say, leave me out of it. No, we have to stand up for the Constitution and we have to defend it um, and make sure that our rights are protected. There was a quote from Thomas Sowell going around where he said, if they can violate your constitutional rights, I'll paraphrase, then basically you don't have any, 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 any rights or a constitution. You must defend the Constitution at every turn the way the Constitution defends you. How we do that, I'm not entirely sure, but I can tell you this. Will Trump, Trump supporters or Republicans, have the political willpower to do whatever it is they're saying? I think the answer is a resounding no. Why? Because nobody ever does, except for Democrats, I guess. Think about the sheer audacity, the vile depravity that you would have to have within you to put sick, uh, sick people with COVID into nursing homes like, like Governor Cuomo did. To then say, I know I'm violating the Constitution. We're going to do it anyway. To then shut down businesses and restaurants, even though they're not even in the top uh, uh, ranking for spreading COVID. 1.43% of COVID cases, restaurants. Why can't you just then social distance? Why, why tell everyone you're going to total shutdown? Because this guy has political willpower. Cuomo says outright, I'm going to lock you down. I'm going to kill the elderly and y'all can't do nothing about it because the men and women in uniform of New York, the ones who remain, I suppose, the oath breakers would, grad would gladly crack a truncheon over your head if it meant they got their paycheck. I am not saying all cops are bad. That's ridiculous because we're talking about two different cultures. We're cultures. We're talking about New York being very, very different from, say, West Virginia. In West Virginia, you're probably not going to see cops doing that kind of stuff. Why? You know, I think it's, it's, it's about the power between individuals. If you have a big property in West Virginia or maybe even a little shack and you're armed to the teeth, what's going to happen? couple of sheriffs and deputies come out and tell you, yeah, you can't put that fence there. And you might get into an argument and they're going to leave because there's not a whole lot they can do. The power between that the cops and that individual are, are very, very close to each other. Although the cops do have authority based on, you know, being voted in the sheriffs or, or you know, some kind of state authority. In New York, you have tens of thousands of police officers who will gladly arrest you for serving a hot dog and a beer, which they've done. And what's anyone going to do? Probably nothing. So the point is, New York, West Virginia, very, very different. When it all comes down to it, you got people on the right saying martial law, VA state senator wants Democrats charged with treason. Well, that's a little, a little bit over the top. Michael Flynn says rerun these elections in the swing states. That sounds to me like the battleground right now. That's where the divide really, really is hitting home. But West Virginia doesn't want to live like New York. And I know people will say, well, New York's got more people in a bigger economy. So what? They're like, if the, if the, if the red states left, they'd be a third world country. I don't think they care. 
You think somebody who lives in the, in the wilderness with their own weapons and cuts their own wood for, for heat is worried about whether or not they're going to get access to your grid? Probably not. These people probably not to survive better than you do. And good luck surviving when you lose a good portion of the farmland. I think not the overwhelming majority, but a decent amount of it, which would cause a lot of strife for these for these blue cities. The point I'm trying to make, I don't know how this is resolved. You, 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 they, the, the media is saying, oh, look at these crazy people saying martial law. You know, Michael Flynn is trending because Trump could deploy the military. Oh, geez. The Democrats have already deployed police to destroy the livelihoods of, of the people who live in their cities and states. So, is it supposed to get worse from here? Are we supposed to be like, oh no, what would happen if the military came out and occupied my city? If anything, you'd probably have your constitutional rights restored. I'm not saying I'm advocating for it. I'm saying that there's no clean answer. And it's not so simple to just bat away when these people are calling for this stuff because worse things are already happening. My friends, they say, the lockdown is the right answer, but the World Health Organization said no. One of the top doctors said it's a last of last resorts. You shouldn't do it. We did it for nine months. It clearly didn't stop the next spike. Why are we continuing to do it again? Because the people in power are enforcing a type of totalitarian law. It's not martial. It's not military. But they're certainly just doing it. So tell me which is worse, your martial law or his martial law. Sorry, don't care. I can't see the difference. But I'll tell you this. If the military did come in, you'd probably get your rights back. Isn't that funny? Here's the first story from Newsweek. After facing criticism for her gubernatorial opponent from, excuse me, from her gubernatorial opponent, Virginia State Senator Amanda Chase doubled down on her support for President Trump declaring martial law because Democrats committed treason during the 2020 election. Chase made headlines this week for publicly calling for Trump to invoke martial law so the military could hold a new election. Virginia delegate Kirk Cox, who like Chase is vying for the Republican gubernatorial nomination, called it, an, uh, called it an absurd and dangerous suggestion, but it did little to temper Chase's support for overturning the election. She said, wow, this is spicy, my friends. Make no mistake, we are at war. The Democratic Party hijacked our 2020 presidential election and have committed treason. Chase wrote in a Facebook post late Wednesday, where the hell are the Republicans? Did Dominion voting systems buy you out too? I hear nothing but crickets. If legislators, courts and Congress don't follow the Constitution, the Virginia state senator said Trump should invoke martial law to allow the military to oversee a new free and fair federal election. I'll tell you this. Maybe the solution is uh, martial law to reinforce the Constitution, which is legally the supreme law of the land. Now, I say legally in a semantic or colloquial sense, not a hard law sense. I had a conversation with a lawyer about this, and they said there's a difference between constitutional and legal. Legal goes through a statutory legislative process, and then it becomes a law. Great. What they're doing in these states is not legal then. It's not constitutional. It did not go through a legislative vote. These elections that I think Rand Paul said two dozen states changed their election rules without going through the state legislatures. The Constitution is on fire. I mean, not to mention the Second Amendment stuff. I've look, I've, I've earlier this year, I was not the biggest two a guy. I'm much more of a, a Second Amendment proponent nowadays, mostly, however, because I've kind of moved out to the middle of nowhere and I still recognize there might be a big problem. You look, when I, I was hanging out with this uh, firearms instructor, one of the best in the nation, apparently, and he said he does have concerns about, say, everybody in a city buying guns because these people don't know what they're doing. And so he actually thought there could be some reasonable approach to, to guaranteeing the right to keep and bear arms, but doing something to make sure those who do have the first level of basic understanding. Because he was like, man, I, I, I'm worried about what happens when you got a whole bunch of people going out and buying guns who have no idea how to use them. That's for big cities. Sure, it doesn't necessarily make sense out in the middle of nowhere, or maybe the conversation should actually be focused on these things happen, I guess. It depends on what your perspective is. Pr uh, protect yourself. It's your responsibility. And if someone's dangerous, they're dangerous, or have the state take care of you, right? Perhaps this guy is in the city, and so that's his perspective. But I'll, I'll put it this way, man. It's certainly true. The Second Amendment is Swiss cheese at this point. The fact that they ban certain things and not other things, the fact that in some states and cities you can't 
even have some of these weapons. And, you know, it, it clearly is being infringed upon. But more importantly, you have the First Amendment clearly being infringed upon in New York. The right to, I mean, actually, I'm sorry, the First Amendment's being infringed upon basically everywhere. The right to peaceably assemble, okay? Congress shall make no law, fine. But what these governors are doing is not following any law. They're in violation of what the First Amendment is supposed to allow, the right to peaceably assemble. Could you imagine if the founding fathers gathered together for the Second uh, Continental Congress, where they planned to sign a declaration of independence, but the king issued a decree due to the to the uh, pandemic, you cannot meet for your constitutional convention for the con- Continental Congress. And then they all went, OK, well, guys, look, we're not going to be able to declare independence now because, you know, we got this pandemic thing going on and the local authorities have said we can't do it. So everybody pack it in. We're going home. Of course not. The right to assemble is basically that they recognized if they wanted to meet to discuss solutions and a redress of grievances, the government could not stop them. Because as they stated, and as Ulysses S. Grant stated, it is the right of any person who feels oppressed by their government to move for revolution. And that includes Antifa and the far left. You bet it does. But you stake your life, your property, and your guarantees as a a citizen when you make that, that charge or claim. Antifa luckily has uh, allies in the DA. So many of these people are not actually going to jail. Now, I, again, I'm not going to uh, say I'm advocating for or against any of this, but I will tell you, I actually believe if there was some kind of martial law, at least the Constitution would be enforced, I guess. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to pretend like I actually trust that would happen. I'll tell you why. The North Carolina GOP lawmaker urged Trump to suspend civil liberties to keep power. Yeah, I'm going to give a big fat F you to that one. You're not suspending my civil liberty so Trump can keep power. Now, the problem, civil liberties have already been suspended. So uh, Trump wouldn't be doing a whole lot if he actually did invoke the Insurrection Act. Let me show you what Michael Flynn said. This is the big story that's breaking now. Quote, he could order within the swing states if he wanted to. He could take military capabilities and basically rerun an election each in those states. Flynn added that using the military is not unprecedented, saying that people talk about it like it's something that we've never done. But he also said he was not calling for that. Martial law has been instituted 64 times, so I'm not calling for that. We have a constitutional process and that has to be followed. I tell you what, he's not wrong. Abraham Lincoln was, I mean, if you actually look at what he did, a bit tyrannical. I know it's 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 blasphemy, right? Well, I tell you what, the far left doesn't like the guy. The right pretty much does like the guy. But let's be honest. Abraham Lincoln uh, uh, shut down newspapers, clearly in violation of the First Amendment. But his his reasoning was essentially rebellion, insurrection. That's what he said. The the you know, the southern states were doing. Abraham Lincoln suspended, I believe he suspended habeas corpus. I know there are a lot of people who are arrested and imprisoned without charge or trial. He did some crazy stuff. And I thought about this and I was like, you know, it's crazy. We look back on what Abraham Lincoln did. He's, he's one of the greatest presidents ever. And that's what Trump supporters have been saying with things like this. They say Trump could do something that would shock the psyche, the, the minds of many people in this country crossing the Rubicon, challenging the corrupt political establishment and enforcing martial law to rerun elections or something to that nature. And people would be angry and it maybe could spark a civil war of some sort. And the things that Abraham Lincoln did are looked back back upon fondly. Not all, not all of it, not by everybody. I mean, I think it's obvious the real reason we like Abraham Lincoln is the Emancipation Proclamation. But I will add the 13th Amendment doesn't do enough. The 13th Amendment abolished slavery, but it also included a provision that you can still have slavery if someone's convicted of a crime. That, to me, is still a problem. Kanye West said so, right? And and it makes sense. Kamala Harris using uh, prison inmates for cheap labor and having to fight fires is horrifyingly dystopian. But hey, I actually think it's a a remnant of the past, not something from the future. I guess, uh, you know, it's just her exercise of that authority. So let me tell you something. If you got Kamala Harris who kept people in prison when they should have been, I, th- I believe they're facing parole or uh, yeah, they're going to be put on parole. She said, no, 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 keep them. We'll pay them a buck an hour to go fight wildfires. Is that the kind of despotism you want? The kind of martial law we can expect? When the far left goes around burning cities down or seizing autonomous zones and the district attorneys just cut them loose, is that what you expect? 
Meanwhile, they're marching in the streets, singing and dancing for Joe Biden, but then telling you you can't run your business. They're telling people they can sing and dance for Joe Biden, but you can't go to church. You're already under some type of totalitarian law, not not legally martial law, but it's already here. So spare me your your gut wrenching, bleeding hearts. of oh, I can't believe Donald Trump his supporters are saying this. Bro, you told people in violation of the First Amendment they couldn't go to church. You sent cops out in New York City to put cameras up to the windows of Jewish schools to spy on children. They went undercover into a restaurant, ordered food, and when the guy served it, they arrested the guy. So don't come to me and go, Trump might declare martial law. These people are crazy. Shut up. You're the people who are going around arresting people for serving food. You're the ones in California who are putting up giant tents and picnic tables for your craft services Hollywood production. Meanwhile, right next to it is a restaurant with picnic tables and a big tent who can't serve because of some mindless unconstitutional edict. We're already living in the nightmare hellscape. So I don't, you know what? I don't care at this point. I live in the middle of nowhere for a reason. And I hope y'all have been paying attention as to why I, and not just me, but many people GTFO'd from these cities. Maybe nothing happens. I always say it. I can't see the future. I have no idea. But I tell you this, I've been having a good time out in the middle of nowhere. You know why we got, it's, it's a big hill. We're in the middle of nowhere. We put on, we got some snowboards and we we're just riding down the hill and everyone's laughing and we're throwing snowballs, having a good old time. Nobody's wearing a mask because we're out in the middle of nowhere. And I got a garage where we built some skate stuff. I know, look, I'm not trying to, uh, I recognize I am extremely fortunate, work very hard, built up a big company. And now we have essentially this really awesome place to hang out. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody can leave these cities. It's very, very horrifying. So I wonder then if your rights have already been suspended totally, would you be upset if the military came in to enforce some kind of constitutional law? (laughs) <laughs> Maybe not. What do you call it when the Democrats are allowed to march to the streets by the thousands and small business owners are not allowed to sell a hot dog? I call that tyranny because the party members are given carte blanche and the regular people are being arrested and spied on. So then when I hear from Michael Flynn or anybody else, I tell you this. What did Michael Flynn say? I'm not saying he should do it. No political willpower. So be it. Cuomo's got political willpower. Cuomo and Bill de Blasio targeted the Jewish community. Targeted. Isn't that amazing? Now that's political willpower. And no one did anything. Now that the Jewish community protested, they arrested the guy Heshi Tischler, who was actually leading the protests. That's what you get. Now, they fought back. They, they were cutting locks on parks, reopening them. And the amazing thing was, Heshi told me the story where they locked this park down and the kids can't go in it. And he's like, two blocks away, you got to park. It's open. Why did you close this one down? And the cops are like, I don't know. And the, the, the uh, parks people are like, <laughs> I have no idea. They were specifically targeting the Jewish community. Isn't that funny? Let's talk about political willpower. Gretchen Whitmer defying Supreme Court orders. Andrew Cuomo defying Supreme Court orders. Defying in the sense that when they were told, they were like, hey, you know, I do what I want. Man, that is political willpower. So if Donald Trump doesn't have that political willpower, I wouldn't be surprised. His supporters could call for it all day and night. I I do not believe it's going to happen. But the Supreme Court could hand down a ruling saying, you can't do this. And the Democratic governor is like, how about I got two big old birds to flip you and I'm going to do it anyway. Wow. And then what? How does Supreme Court actually enforce any of this? They don't. They tell us that we're supposed to abide by these norms and these rules and everything. And certain votes are official and certain votes aren't. I tell you, if the Supreme Court says something and the states are like, we just don't care. If the Constitution says this is how elections are run, these are your constitutionally protected rights. And these states say, I don't care. Then we don't really have a Constitution, do we? Then we don't really have civil liberties, do we? So you can't really suspend something that's been taken away already, can you? I'm not saying Trump should do it. I'm just pointing out we are already under some some boot stomping Democrat BS regardless of your opinion of whether it's right or wrong because of the pandemic. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the Democrats have already suspended your rights. So now don't act. So so when the left comes and they say, can you believe they're calling on Trump to do this? I can because you called on your guy to do it. And he did. Trump's just the one not doing it because Trump isn't actually a fascist. Isn't that funny? All right. 
I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, and we have more spicy news. Maybe we'll just go to war. Maybe that's the plan for all of this stuff, huh? Stick around 1 p.m. on this channel, and I will see you all then.